I was going from Chicago, where I grew up, to Los Angeles to go to USC for college. And I was assigned a college roommate who ended up being the most amazing woman in the world. She was so full of joy and peace and love. And she reached out to me, and I came from a great home. I had a wonderful family. We were in the arts. We had a great time together. And yet she had more peace than I did. And I was fascinated by that. So all year, freshman year, she kept asking me questions, and I would answer what I thought was, you know, very smart, and suddenly realized that what she was asking me was starting to really impact me. And I started thinking about it more. And then I would come home to the dorm room, and her Bible happened to be open to just a place we had been talking about that morning. And I didn't realize till later she had this all worked out. <laughs> I had no idea. And three weeks before the end of freshman year, I was walking through campus, and I just stopped and said, God, I want what Debbie has. So I want you to do whatever you want to give me what she has. But there are three things I don't want. I don't want to tell anybody about you because my dad told me there are two things you don't talk about in public, politics and religion. So I don't want to tell anybody. Second thing, I don't want to be a missionary. The missionaries I've seen at my church were miserable. They dressed dumpy. It was just, I didn't want any of that. And the third thing, I didn't want to go to Africa because I thought that's what happens to anybody who becomes a Christian. They just have to go to Africa. So I said, other than that, you have all of me. And I waited and I thought maybe there'd be some lightning or something and nothing happened. So I went, oh well, and I went to class. I came back after class and I walked in the dorm room and Debbie was there. And the minute I walked in the door, she looked at me and she said, something's different about you. And I thought, and I said, no, there's not. And I, we kept going. That night we were doing homework. And she looked at me and said, Karen, something is different about you. What's going on? And I said, nothing. And I thought, what's showing? Something's happening. And then the next morning I got up. I was ready to run out to class. And she stood in front of the door. And she said, you've become a Christian, haven't you? I burst into tears. How did you know? She said, it's so obvious. You know, we're... And so I hugged her and I said, I'll talk to you later. And I went out the door and when I shut the door, I remember thinking very clearly, only Debbie, I'm not telling anybody else. She's the only one. And I went to class, I came home, I told her all about it. And then the next three weeks of school, before it ended, I didn't tell a soul. And I went home and I decided the same thing. I wasn't gonna tell anybody. And the first week I was home, I sat down talking to my mom and she said, I have to let you know your dad and I are talking about getting divorced. Oh, I, I fell apart. I thought, I'm from a perfect family. What, what could this be? And all I knew to do was to say, you need Jesus. You, you have to have Jesus. He'll stop it. And she said, what are you talking about? I said, you have to turn to him. He's going to change your life, and then it's not going to happen. She said, well, what do I do? I said, you pray to him. And she said, how do I do that? And I said, I don't know. Just talk to him. I had no idea what I was doing. I wasn't trained, I never experienced this. All I knew is my mom had to believe in Jesus. And she said, okay, well, I'll, I'll pray. And she said, what do I say? And I said, just tell him you, that you believe in him, that you need him and you want him to take over your life and change you. And she said, well, can you do it? And I'm like, oh, okay. So I prayed for her and she joined me and she became a Christian right there. My parents never got divorced. Years later, my dad became a Christian. They were married 54 years, and it was an amazing, life-changing experience. But I still didn't want to tell anybody else about him. <laughs> so the irony is, the three things I told Jesus I didn't want, through the years, every single one became the greatest joy in the world. I love telling people about Jesus. I'm a missionary in Hollywood. It hit me years later wait a minute, this is the world's most influential mission field, and we're missionaries here. It was a crazy concept. And then my family took a trip to Africa a few years ago, and it was the highlight of my life. It was just beautiful and powerful and life-changing. And on the way home on the plane is when I realized, oh my gosh, the three things I didn't want are the greatest joys. And then my husband always jokes and said, you should have told him you didn't want a billion dollars. <laughs> I didn't think of that one. <laughs>